Again, as I'm talking about, I'm not bashing ad networks, data exchanges, demand side platforms. I spent a lot of my career at an ad network. Um, some of my best friends work at ad networks. Some of my best friends work at data exchanges. I think they are amazing solutions to the fact that there are 300 million publishers on the internet. And agencies need solutions to access those 300 million publishers. What I'm asking the premium publishers in the space to really think about is, if you're a premium publisher with your own Salesforce, why are you working with them? So look, a little plug for ad networks. There's a reason that 30% of direct marketing spend is moved online, but only 5% of brand ad spend is moved online. The ad networks have done an amazing job innovating. They've done a great job servicing their clients. And this is why we would all love the IAB members, anyone focused on the premium side, would love to see that as 30% of brand ad spend online. So ad networks have done an amazing job building their credibility in the industry, and that's to be commended, and that's been to the great benefit of the 300 million sites online. But this is what's happening if you're a premium publisher. We can go through the whole graphic, or you can all read it. What happens is you see fewer premium RFPs for your direct sales force, which you're spending a lot of money on, which causes you to have more unsold inventory. Obviously, the price of that inventory falls. You make less money for the same content, which means you need more to sell. So you go out and you start selling your data. You start selling your audience. You start selling, letting other people sell your $20 product for $2. What does that lead to? It leads to fewer premium RFPs. It creates more inventory. The price of your inventory continues to fall. You get it. That's what a cycle is. Look, for those of you that are fans of Breaking Bad, I was thinking about this as I was watching that show last week. This is what's happening to your brand strategy. It's the faces of meth. It's the cycle of addiction. It all starts out seeming like it's a good idea to work with these partners, but in the end, you're fundamentally killing your product. There you go. Now I want to talk about if you've decided you're going to choose door A or door B and stop with the silly idea that you can be both at the same time, I want to talk about each of those doors. I want to help you all sell this idea internally. If you've decided that you're going to go with a premium strategy, here are some great quotes from some of the folks in the audience. You all have seen this. We've all heard this. Yet, as I, show, as I showed, 84% of that inventory is still coming from the top 100 publishers. So we all know this, and we all know that as premium publishers, you're causing your own destruction, but at the same time, you're doing it. So I'm going to give you the slide that you're going to show your CEO. Here it is. If you email me, I'll just send this to you, or you, frankly, you can build it yourself in Photoshop. This is all you need to tell your CEO if you decide to make these decisions. Why would anyone buy your quality premium product? If they all know they can buy your quality premium product with the logo taken off at 10% the price. And that's what's happening all day long. Again, this is not anti-ad network. These are the premium publishers who are choosing at the same time, like my Walmart greeter example, to sell their quality product out the back door and pretend no one knows. Everyone knows that this is where it comes from. That 84% number, I did an informal survey over the last couple of days. I asked people what they thought it was going to be. Everybody was guessing 50, 60, 90%. Advertisers know your inventory is in these networks. They know that they can buy your product at 90% discount. I don't see how anyone can both be OK with that and continue to fund a brand strategy and a premium sales force. So to me, for those that choose premium, it's a pretty simple choice. Exit your ad network contracts. Exit your data contracts. Prepare your CFO on Wall Street for the fact that, obviously, you're going to lose some money in the short term. But structure your sales force and your products appropriately and figure out how to extend your own reach and grow your own audience. Because, obviously, you're going to have to make up the revenue hole by finding more of your premium product to sell. For premium, you need large, impactful ad units. You need interstitials. You need videos. You need communicating ads. You've all seen these before. There have been some great case studies. Forbes done an amazing job. New York Times done an amazing job. Again, these are great integrated emotional advertising experiences that are delivering a premium product to quality advertisers willing to pay for it. Why at the same time would you possibly undermine that with the same product at 90% off? It just doesn't make any sense, and you all know it. Now, if you're going to sell premium, you need more reach. This is obviously why I started Adify. There's a couple ways to get reach, and you should be doing all of them. The first one, obviously, is you should just be working on growing traffic to your own site. You should be optimizing your site. You should be syndicating your content. You should be tweeting and Facebooking your content. You should make sure that consumers have a great reason to interact with your content. On top of that, you're going to look to grow your audience outside the four walls of your site, but with other quality premium products. 
You're going to use some M&A, potentially. It can be very expensive and risky. Again, there's 300 million sites out there to choose from. Or you can look at aggregating, and that's the concept behind all of the vertical ad networks that so many of our customers and so many of our competitors' customers have chosen. And this is really where you're still standing behind your brand, and you're still allowing your sales force to sell that premium product. It just happens to be content that you've syndicated to other publishers. You've syndicated video to other publishers, and you're looking to sell that same audience to advertisers. Again, advertisers aren't looking to pay to, advertisers aren't looking to screw you over. Advertisers are looking for a simple and efficient way to buy a product that works for their message. And they'll buy it from you at a premium if you can defend that price point. You just have to defend yourself. Smart ways to build reach, CBS has done this, MTV, Univision, Martha Stewart. Some of these are our clients, some of them are not. They're all fundamentally extending their own reach, syndicating their content out to other publishers, and that is the way they've chosen to try and grow their premium revenue. Quality, C quality, uh, quality sites in the mid-tail have kept CPMs very high. Edify puts this data out quarterly. Uh, you can subscribe to it. We email it out. We put it out in a press release. It's called the Edify Vertical Gauge. We do a study across 200 plus vertical premium networks on our platform to look at what's happened with premium CPMs in the long tail. They've continued to grow. So agencies are willing to pay the premium product if it's packaged along with your brand and sold appropriately and where you don't undermine it at 90% off just around the corner. Now if you choose the other side, again, nothing wrong with ad networks. So a survey, 25% of spend is going to go through ad networks in 2010. It's an efficient way for you to sell your advertising. It's just at odds with your core brand sales force. So to me, if you're going to work with, if you're going to work with ad networks, here's what you should do. Make sure you're evaluating all of them. Get more ad networks. Get more data contracts. But reorganize your staff and your products. Stop spending all of your money on premium salespeople. Truthfully, if you're going to just go after the, brand st go after the uh, volume strategy, fire your salespeople. Fire your ad traffickers and make sure your most expensive people in your organization are your business development people working with all the exchanges, working with the networks. Make sure you have the right deals in place to maximize your revenue. What I'm just asking you to do is not to spend all of your money on your premium sales force and then undermine them all day long by working with other remnant providers discounting your brand. 